Well, no doubt you have seen Cynthia Sykes on television many times, most notably, of course, in the series Saint Elsewhere, where she portrays Dr. Annie Cavanero. Well, hold on to your hats because you're about to see her in the new motion picture, Blake Edwards' is The Man Who Loved Women, also starring Burt Reynolds and Julie Andrews. Cynthia Sykes, it's a pleasure to see you. Oh, thanks, John. I've just now learned you're also from Kansas. Right. Went well, to Wichita Kansas State. City. <laughs> How did you get from Wichita State into the bed of Burt Reynolds? Oh, <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> it's got to be kind of a long and hazardous oh, trip. It was a hazardous trip. Is this your first film, however? It I, is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the first time in a motion picture you're in Burt Reynolds' bed. Isn't that incredible? I, you must be kind of living out a dream I, well, exactly. that many folks I, out there are having well, right now. Well, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And I thought, my, my mother's calling, my grandmother, my sisters, and watch out there, watch out there for, you know, they were so, wanted to hear every detail. But uh, part of me was still, I think, part of the fan of thinking, oh, here's Burt Reynolds. I've always thought he's such an incredible person and so handsome and so debonair and dashing and bright and funny and... Here I am. I'm I'm in bed with him, and and I <laughs> several times. I mean, yes, I've been here for hours, and I mean, it was just like when I first knew we were going to do the scene, we were holding hands, and the scene starts, and we're holding hands, and, and I look over, and, and I thought, any minute now, my skin is going to be touching Burt Reynolds' skin. <laughs> oh, my hands were sweating. I thought. Oh my gosh, did I gargle? <laughs> you know, everything. Well, in that scene. You think about all these strange yeah. things, you know. <laughs> he has sort of regained his potency, and there you are back together, and he's indicated that he's interested once again. Uh, does a scene like that take as many hours as usually it's, it's claimed, and does it become as tedious? No, as this hear? one didn't, because it was yeah. pretty brief, and um, uh, we didn't. It took, uh, it took a while, though. It took a large part of the half the day. Well, you said it was brief, but was there anything left on the editing room floor? I wonder. Uh, no, that's that was it. That was, I mean, it was a pretty quick scene compared to some, but it was uh, short and sweet. I think. You know. Your character of Courtney is typical of many of the women in Burt Reynolds' life. They are intelligent and they are active, and yet you don't seem to mind Burt's philandering around. Now, I'm in terms ask of you the to, character, you mean? Yeah, and I'm going to ask you okay. <laughs> to step out of character for a moment and examine this relationship between Burt Reynolds and you and the other women in the film. Would you in real life be quite that uh, casual about him playing around and playing the field? As no, he does? not in real life. I mean, yeah. Give us your impression of how this works. <laughs> Only well, in the movies? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what I think it is. Uh, there's an article recently in, in Esquire magazine talking about the Peter Pan syndrome. I think maybe that's where what Bert is. I mean, David Fowler, the character Bert plays, is in, is sort of where he is. He has he's so successful. He's gotten to a certain point in his life where he's famous. He has anything he wants. He has many choices. And at that point, women aren't really better. They're just different. So there's so many different choices he can have and make. And how do you make a commitment? And also. What the Peter Pan syndrome talks about is a man will go after this woman. He sees a woman, he pursues her, and once he's, the challenge is over, once he's, he's conquered the woman, and she's no longer on a pedestal in a way, she's no longer to be pursued, a little bit of the mystery's gone, he sees her as a real human being, and then his head turns, he's, oh, you know, maybe that's what I need. That's the perfect <laughs> woman. Uh, I love you, but that's maybe better for me and so they what they do is create they set it up so they never really commit to somebody and it's not the women really it's the man well I'm wondering if maybe the men shouldn't be taking note to be vulnerable <laughs> to can to retain a little bit of that little boy quality seems to be very effective for yes. uh, Bert's routine here but at some point I think in terms of my life not the character I, I would I think a relationships makes a progression where you let you say let's stop playing at ha playing house and let's really do this or not. I but mean, you're that's not what making I would demands, do. Though. Well, see, in the, the, movie, as, now, as the character, let's talk. <laughs> now, the Courtney, I think, here's Courtney. She, she's a talk show host. She has her own career. She's independent. She uh, probably doesn't have a lot of extra time. And, and the shortage of men these days, and he, David is very terrific. He's a successful artist. He's talented. He appeals to that side of her, that nature of her, that creative side that she, you know, she's the always working, 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 and, and it's sort of left brain, right brain. I think he appeals to another part of her brain and probably other areas also. But <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so she, when she does have time, she's very happy with what David can offer her. So for that, so they, they sort of give each other what they need. I mean, he has a consistency. There's a consistency there without feeling trapped for him. 
And, she, and that's fine with her at this point in time. I'm impressed. You've got this all figured out. Finally. That's great. <laughs> well, I, that's what happens when you interview a talk show host, or at least in the movie she's a talk show host. Cynthia Sykes, we're out of time just for now, but we'll be right back because I want to learn more about what it takes for a Kansas girl to make good. We'll be right back. Okay, we can go right in then. Uh-oh, was that a 10-minute cue you were giving me? No, no. Well, as I promised you, we're back here with Cynthia Sykes in sunny Florida, incidentally, talking about the man who loved women with Burt Reynolds, Kim Basinger, Julie Andrews. Cynthia Sykes, of course, plays Courtney, one of the uh, number of girlfriends in Burt's life. We've already found out you're a Kansas girl. Uh, recently, I had a chance to interview Dee Wallace, who's also from Kansas right. City in this case. Uh -huh. um, she had her own things to say about what it has taken for her to maintain her integrity and yet make it big in the movies, as she has done and as you are now doing. Any thoughts of your own that you'd like to share with those prospective actors out there in Kansas City, Wichita, and surrounding areas? Oh, I'd just say I think the most important thing through anything that happens is to be very in touch with your inner life, your inner self, your, your impulses, your instincts, your, your essence, the essence of you, and trust that that's right, that that voice in you is right and not to let other people sway you or convince you to be something else or say something else or dress another way. or You have to come to that. You have to, you have to know what's comfortable for yeah. you how, and who you are. How many of us ever really know that? Though? But you do to a sense that you have to feel if you have enough ambition or you have enough, uh, you're gravitating to a certain direction, especially in acting, you've got to do it your way because what you, in, as an actress, what is different about actresses is what you bring to it, what you bring. What D. Wallace brings, what I bring, D. Wallace is not going to do it the way I do it. If I'm trying to copy D. Wallace, there's already a D. Wallace. Or if I'm trying to copy somebody else, I have to be very in touch with what gift I have, what I have to offer, what is the essence of myself. But then you have to know where to take it. I'm thinking now of that moment in which you realize, I can't stay in Kansas anymore, Dorothy, <laughs> or Toto. I've got to leave. When did you leave, and where did you go I left first? at uh, 19. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, 18, I went overseas with Bob Hope to Vietnam on the last Christmas show. And that was really the deciding factor for me. Some guys have all the breaks. <laughs> I'm referring now to Bob Hope, of course. I, I mean, I, I learned so much from that trip, and it was a big, uh, had a big effect on my life going there. And during the war and the soldiers and all that war means took on another whole dimension for me. But um, I decided to leave right after that. And I went to college for one year to just get a little training and try to decide make sure that I, I wanted to go to Hollywood, wh if I could, what acting was about, because I really had no experience, and I loved singing, but I didn't really have training. Well, I was wondering about the television work. Has that been primarily on the East or West Coast? West or Coast. West Coast. So I headed for L.A. I just yeah. picked up and moved, finally. I just made the break. I just left the Midwest. I got up and moved, and I said, I'm going to go find out if I can do this. Any regrets about that? No. I mean, a lot of things are happening for you now, but just it wondering. Was very, oh, with the, during the journey, <laughs> the struggle, there, there were... I wondered a few times whether I was in the right place here, you know, or, and there actually in LA, if I was in the right profession and the right city and there are a lot of considerations, different considerations in a big city. I mean, I wasn't used to a lot of things that go on. <laughs> well, you're, you're a very elegant presence in the film and I'd say that to you oh, behind your back you. as well. And I was thank wondering you. now, it's been several months in the can and what's happening now that we can be watching for now that we've well, seen you on the Well, I go back to work at St. Elsewhere and that'll continue. And uh, I, depending on what happens on my next hiatus, how much time I have, I can figure out what I can do next. So I'm waiting to get a little more idea of that and maybe do a play or look for another film. So juggling, juggling here. But it's great to have St. Elsewhere, and uh, that's a consistent uh, and wonderful uh, job to have. Cynthia Sykes, I want to thank you for taking the time today. It's been a long day for you with the Oh, interviews. that's okay. Do you ever still visit any relatives back in Wichita? Oh, want sure. To say hello my, to anyone? my whole family's back there. I'll be seeing them. And uh, uh, very dear friend Dave Owen, who was Lieutenant Governor of uh, Kansas years ago, a very good person, lives outside of Kansas City out there. Well, they'll be seeing and the show be, because we hopefully. go by cable out there. Oh, Wichita. great. So they're watching you right great. now. Well, sure, pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the number of women that Burt Reynolds loves in the film of that same name, directed by Blake Edwards, Cynthia Sykes. Thank you very much. Thank you.